Hey everybody, Mr. Kevin here. Dude, look at my hairdo. <laughs> I got I got wavy hair is what I got. It's all waving bye-bye. Sheesh. So I have to cut little 22 and a half degree angle pieces. Kind of like this, but bigger. This was gonna be a cleat and it's just too, too big, too big. So I made a little jig for my sled and I was gonna show you guys. It's quick and easy. You use a double stick tape, a couple chunks of uh, Double I'm back. So you use carpet tape, double-sided carpet tape. I gotta slow these things down. So you use double stick, super heavy duty carpet tape. You cut little angles that you want. 22 and a half is what it is for me. So I can cut this. And you just tape it down to your sled so you can take it off later. Yeah, works good. I'm gonna show you right now. <gasps> Alrighty. Hold on, I'm, gonna, I'm turning you. I have to make all those noises. So there you go, this one's actual cleat that I'm gonna use later on. Put that there. This is a cutoff from just a piece of scrap. And there's the little, uh, you can see where the saw goes through. I'm gonna just stick that like that and I'm gonna tape these down into place. Cut the tip off, bring this all the way through. And we'll be, we should be good to go. Uh, I'll show you how it goes here in a second. All right, we'll see you. Might as well show you how I do it. I'm just gonna put this across here. Make sure you got a dry surface. Oh, watch out for that thing. I guess it'd probably help if I put my uh, sled on the right way. This tape is like uh, fiberglass, I guess. Heavy duty, double stick. So when I cut through this piece here, I'm sure it's gonna, it might fly off, I don't know. You just have to be careful about it. My fingers used to work better when I was a kid. This ought to be exciting. Hope I don't knock that over and hit the blade. <gasps> that would just suck. Now I gotta make a jig, uh, I gotta take this jig and flip it on right on the other side, daughter. All right, I think the brain fart's over. Anyway, this is the other cutoff from the other piece. Anyway, so I'm gonna put this here. Oops. Lining this up on my line here. Puppy like that. And that'll give me something just to hold on to while it's getting cut. Hopefully it'll work. All right, here we go. So this is actually a floor for a hide a spot. There's two of them. Or it's a chest plate. Whatever you want to make it out of. Not bulletproof. All right, we'll see you next time on the happy ho-ho. Hee-haw, ho-ho, it's raining outside, bye. Look, the door's open, it's not raining. Those of you who want to make curved parts and usually use a trammel, you know, like a little trammel tool. Like, I have one right here. Right here. This is how ridiculous it is. So the trammel is, uh, got a pencil on a stick. Here's the other end. Uh, yeah, way over there. So you, basically, that pencil way down there. Let's see if I do it like this. There it is. So you put this down and you mark it. I don't have a lot of room, so I did something else. I made a bow and arrow. Boom. <laughs> Basically, I took a, uh, a band clamp, 
put it on a piece of redwood and bent it. Well, and tightened it. Like this. <clears throat> Until it made a curve that I wanted. It's pretty curvy. Can you see? Curvy. So if you want to make something that's uh, curved and a bow and arrow at the same time, just get yourself a hunk of redwood because redwood bends pretty good. It's pretty, you know, bendy. And just put yourself a band clamp on there, tighten it up till you get the curve you want. And uh, yeah, you have little curvy parts. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, yeah. I gotta get back to work. See ya. Hi everyone, Kevin here from Humble Craftworks. How are you? Today I'm going to show you how I make a little El Nacho in Zidoro. One of those custom hand pull thingamajigger bobbers. This is actually a, a, a scrap drawer front. And it's just got the little finger pulley thing in it. Uh, I had a client that wanted this. They didn't want handles, they wanted finger pull. So I had to make a jig for it. And I'll show you uh, show you how it goes. So the router, got my old trusty route, Bosch router. It's got one of these little, I don't know if you can see that or not. It's got no bearing on it. If you try to route something without a, without a bearing and you freehand something, it's going to eat you. So you got to make a jig for it. So you have to make a plywood jig to control where it goes. Otherwise it just goes nuts and you uh, have a problem. Okay, so here's the jig. It's three quarter inch plywood. I screwed some blocks on the end so I make sure I have something to bump into here so they'll all come out the same. If you need to tie it up against the door or drawer front, whatever it is. So I don't want it to move so I got them clamped down with my, my Jorgensen clamps here. I'm gonna be climb feeding this. So I'm gonna go in this way and actually go backwards and keep doing that and doing that. There's two reasons for that. One is the blowout that happens on this side. So to get rid of the blowout, you just cut it in reverse, basically. I was gonna put a quarter inch round over on this thing here. I would go me and I'd go this way, right? When you're climb feeding something, you go backwards. And that will alleviate a blowout here and here, just because of the way the cutter's spinning and you're using it backwards. So <laughs> keep your fingers crossed. Hopefully everything goes well. All righty then. Now I'm ready for surgery. Uh, snippy, snippy. Uh, no thanks. Hey. I'm all steamy again. So, you see how that went? I made several cuts. Going back this way, just go in a little bit. I'm just going, it's like a feel. You feel it going in and you don't want to hear it chattering when it starts making that noise. You, uh, you just back off. So you just want to like lightly cut it. You want to cut it, put a little pressure on it, but not too much. There's Baxter. About, it cuts about maybe a 16th to an eighth every time. And you just keep going back and back and back. And then finally the last cut, I make sure it's up against this fence and I go slowly forward all the way across and then all the way back out that last pass because that'll clean up any of the burn uh, it's pretty burned let me see okay it's not too bad there you go so this is going to be a door door here you just reach in and grab it and pull out so i've got uh five more of these to do the jig has a center line on it which is like four and five eighths to the center. So from the top of the door here, I make a center mark and I just line this up basically with the center line and then clamp it in place. It's pretty simple and it's pretty cheap if you got a piece of plywood laying around and that's how it goes. And then you hang it, let me see. Yeah, I don't think it's this door. Big gads, it's the wrong door. I made the door too short. No, I didn't. 
The story goes on another cabinet. <laughs> so anyway, so here's the jig. Piece of plywood. Got the little bumpers on there to go up against the door. Center line. Basically all you do is router goes in, goes out, boom. You just gotta climb feed slowly but surely until you're all the way to the back. And then that last pass, you go in, out, and over. And uh, yeah. Well, there you go. There's your uh, little, uh, what do they call it? It's, it's my little splinter of wisdom to you. Easy jig, simple to do. And we'll see you the next time from Humble Craftworks. This is Kevin signing off. Hasta mañana. Bye. Huh. Hi, it's me again. <laughs> so I don't know. Oh man, there I gotta take these off. So I don't know if uh, everybody uses blow motion. I use all my hinges are blow motion. So I've had two customers in the last 10 years complain about soft close. I always just try to close it, uh, but they don't get used to it. They're just like, oh. One actually changed her mind after she used it once, twice, three times. And went, oh, well, you don't have to slam the door and it doesn't bounce back. It soft closes. Yeah, that's, they're awesome. But if you get people who don't like them, you put them on, there's a special little button. There's a little button right there. You just take it and you push it down right there, a little button. And you'll hear it go click, click, click. Hear it? <gasps> it's gone. It's magic. It's the magic button. No more soft clothes. So, buy soft clothes. These are great hinges, blow motions. I like them better than most everything. I've used everything from Sleeche to uh, whatever other ones there are. Yeah, blow motion, blum. It's the one I use. And if you get tired of making that noise, you just push the little thing back. See that little doohickey pop back up? It's back to slow. That's another one of those little splinters of wisdom. All right, so one last thing. Uh, I make jigs for everything usually. So uh, when I'm hanging these here hinge plates, uh, I always drill my holes at three inches from the top to the center of the uh, 35 millimeter cuppy thing. Okay, so three inches down, 35 millimeter drill hole. So I, use a little, I use a little cheater block. I'm lazy that way. So I just uh, figure out what that measurement is. And I don't know if you can see that line, there's a line there. So there's a line right there. And what I do is I just take a simple little block like this. This is one and seven eighths. Put it up here. There's a strike line. And when I put my plate on there, I try to center up the, uh, the little hole on the plate with the little line. And Vicks bit it. That's a Vicks bit. It's got a little springy thing. I don't know if I, I think these are pretty common. You can get these all over the place. But just put them in the uh, thing and you, uh, uh, you can fix your tooth with them. Oh, don't do that. But uh, yeah, and then you just uh, zippity doo dah. <laughs> See the little thing? It centers it in the hole. That's a good thing. Because if you don't center it in the hole, it's crooked and then it goes forward or backwards and screws up everything. So that works pretty well. See? <sighs> like magic. So, uh, yeah. Use a Vix bit. Pre drill all your screws. Because these little screws here, little screws. Uh, you don't want to strip these out. And I always put these in by hand. Okay. Uh, put them in by hand. Don't put them in with the, the driver. Ow, that's hot. You know, you're like. It'll strip right out. That's not a good thing. You can make it slower too. Like you're farting. Yeah, don't use these by hand.
Hands good. All right, I don't know. Must be time to go. The thing isn't working anymore. All right, bye. Man, I sure do talk a lot. Ooh, listen. It's like a low E. That perfect pitch. Uh, makes you look like an idiot. <laughs> For me, it's not hard to do, so.